morning. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be silenced. Today we are celebrating the first Sunday of Advent. I am Joseph Dembick. Our second lector is Joe Tufo, and our leader of song is my wife, Stephanie. The deacon of the Mass is Deacon Mace Mazzoni. Monsignor Michael McCormick is our principal celebrant. Next weekend, there will be a second collection for both the Retirement Fund for Religious and the Christmas flowers and church decorations. Thank you. Advent, a period of devout and joyful expectation, challenges every Christian to prayerfully consider the myriad gifts that God has given us. At this Mass, we will be recognizing and praying for the young members of, the, of our community who, in devote and joyful expectation, are studying and preparing to receive the sacraments of First Reconciliation, First Eucharist, and Confirmation. May the prayers and witness of our faith community support their efforts and their resolve. The Christmas, the Christmas giving trees are available on the sides of the church, so our parishioners may assist the less fortunate at Christmas time. Please take a tag today. Gifts can be returned and placed around the Christmas trees until noontime on Sunday, December 12th. Please be mindful that when returning the gift, please use the original tag so as to identify the gift for the proper th family. Thank you very much. Our annual breakfast with Santa will be held on Saturday, December 11th from 9 a.m. to noon. Please save the date. Thank you. On Sunday, December 19th, at 5 p.m. in the church, we will be hosting the Men of Harmony for their Christmas concert. All are most welcome to attend. The annual St. Charles Borromeo Seminary Appeal is currently being conducted. Please see the special insert in the parish bulletin. This week's Pot of Gold jackpot prize is $7,000. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and also at the rectory. As we prepare for Mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the blue prayer booklet. Please stand and let us pray. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 41, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 4-1.
special welcome to those who are joining us from their home, and also a very special welcome to the candidates for sacraments and their families. Very, very happy that you're here, and we will have the presentation of the candidates after communion. In addition to your own personal intentions for today's Mass, I'd like to especially remember Maureen Spinoza, a father a mother of our parishioner, Steve Spinoza, also the grandmother of our leader of song, Stephanie Dembick. So if we could remember Maureen, we celebrated her funeral yesterday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, where I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright and anticipation of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. And that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone 
who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. On this first Sunday of Advent, all Christians are being called to begin preparing for the, the coming of the Messiah. The word Advent comes from a Latin word which means arrival. The Advent season affords all of us the opportunity to prepare for a dual arrival of our God, namely, the coming of the Messiah into the world through the birth of Jesus, and secondly, the coming of the risen Christ and glory at the end of time. Today's scripture readings speak of both expectations. The Advent season highlights both waiting and expectation. When we wait, for a person to come or an event to happen, we prepare. In a similar way, Advent provides a time for each of us to renew our personal efforts of expecting God. The message of the gospel says, be vigilant at all times and pray. One of the challenges of expectation is to become more conscious of how God comes to us and in our everyday life. We believe that God is present in creation, in the beauty of the sunrises and sunsets, in the mountains and oceans, and in the changing seasons. Our relationship at home, work, school, and social activities can also reveal the presence of God. If we allow ourselves to do so, we can discover God in events of our ordinary life. However, to do so, we will need to spend time reflecting and allowing God to become present to us. This waiting will need energy, attention, patience, and time. In finding the presence of God, we will come to discover that surprises may very well happen. We may discover the vast richness of God's mercy, the immensity of God's love, and the demands of God's justice. God's presence also offers us hope. Each of us is challenged to let God's presence enter our lives and become a living symbol of God's presence to each other. And so, on this first Sunday of Advent, we may want to ask ourselves, how do I invite God into my life? How do I intentionally prepare for the coming of God into my life? Advent gives us time to rearrange our lives and prepare for Christ's coming. What can we do practically during the season of Advent. Perhaps we can take five to 10 minutes each day praying and reflecting on how God was actually present in the people and events of my day. Perhaps we can visit the Lord in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament 
in our St. Joseph Chapel. Perhaps we can make God's presence felt in the lives of others through our prayers and generous gifts of time, talent, and treasure. As we continue in our liturgy, let us pray for the grace to begin the season of Advent, preparing to recognize his presence among us and joyfully celebrate his birth on Christmas Day. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, in confidence, we now offer our needs to our gracious God. For the church, that we may be attentive to God's presence and action in our lives, so that we may be ready to act when Christ invites. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that Christ may increase our love for one another and help us to be overflowing with generosity toward all who are in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our For a renewed awareness of the irreplaceable need to assemble in person for the celebration of Sunday Mass, that this will bring about a deeper understanding of the Eucharist as the indispensable source of grace to live the Christian life. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish and visioning team, may the Holy Spirit enlighten their hearts and minds as they continue their work with our parish pastoral plan. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for all those now discerning their vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, or consecrated life, that they will be attentive and receptive to the invitation of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all first responders and military personnel in our communities and around the world who bravely serve to protect us from harm and for all our veterans for their dedication, discipline, selfless service, and courage. Be with them all and protect them always. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are ill, that they may know God's healing presence and entrust themselves to God's loving care. We especially pray for Kay Bademan, Harriet Beatrice, Rocco Botafaco, Michael Kane, Ruby Chapman, Nicholas Corrado, Josephine Dominic, Casey Eisenbray, Carol Etheridge, Eleanor Feldsbauer, James Galloway, Mark Gravante, Tom Holden, Vivian Hood, Maureen Jones Kiefer, Joe Killian, JT Nuttall, Shirley Matthews, Joe Merrick, Danica Mulholland, Ed Rafferty, Greg Schaefer, Ava Schneider, Alyssa Nicole Spangerberg, Samantha Tomasic, Bill West, and Kathy West. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who fear the approach of death, that God will free their hearts and help them look expectantly to Christ, who brings life and salvation. We also remember all who have died in the light of Christ, that they may enjoy the everlasting light of God's presence. We especially pray for Howard Marish Sr., Deacon Mark Meiser, Father Richard McAndrews, and Catherine Harkin. Let us pray to the Lord. We also remember and commend to the Lord Maureen Spinoza that she too be received into the kingdom and be at peace forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Creator God, show us your ways, teach us your paths, and guide us in your truth as we await in joyful hope the coming of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 46, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, number 4-6.
pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and to pray for the glory of his name. For our good and the of the Church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal life. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Maureen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Our communion hymn will be number 66, Maranatha, Come Lord Jesus, number 66. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, number 66.
Let's pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we're going to have the presentation of our candidates who will be making sacraments in the springtime. I now ask the children who are preparing for the sacrament of first reconciliation, for their first Holy Communion, and for the sacrament of confirmation to please stand. All the candidates, please stand at this time. And for the second graders, if you want to stand up on the kneeler so we can see you. Very good. My dear young people, you are at a time of life when you are being called to receive a sacrament of the church. Some of you will be receiving the sacrament of reconciliation for the first time. Some of you will be receiving your first Holy Communion, and some of you will be receiving the Sacrament of Confirmation. This is a special time in your lives to deepen your understanding about the essential gifts that Jesus has given us to assist us on our journey of faith. These are the gift of his forgiveness in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, the gift of his body and blood in the sacrament of Holy Eucharist, and the gift of his Holy Spirit, first received in baptism, then strengthened and renewed in the sacrament of confirmation. Candidates for the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of Holy Eucharist, and the sacrament of confirmation. If you were willing to prepare for these sacraments through prayer, study, faithful completion of assignments, and willingness to learn more about Christ and his church and the mysteries of our faith, please together say, I am. Wonderful. Now I invite the parents and guardians of these candidates to please stand along with them. Parents and guardians, if you are willing to renew your commitment to dedicate yourselves in working with your child as your child grows in knowledge and faith, please together say, we will. Will you teach and support your child by your own willingness to be forgiven through the sacramental reconciliation, your faithful attendance at weekly mass, your desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and to make efforts to grow in the life of the Holy Spirit, please say, we will. And parents and guardians at baptism, you sign your child with the sign of the cross, claiming your child for Christ. I now invite you once again to place the sign of the cross on your child's forehead. And let us pray. Lord God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to live among us and to proclaim his message of faith, hope, and love to all nations. In your goodness, you reconcile our brothers and sisters through your forgiveness in the sacrament of reconciliation. You nourish them through the reception of the Eucharist, and you strengthen them with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Bless these candidates as they continue their formation in our Catholic faith by conscientious preparation for the reception of sacraments. Strengthen them with your gifts that they may always walk in the footsteps of your son and faithfully serve you in their neighbor. Bless their parents and guardians. 
May they provide good example to their children and so fulfill their responsibilities in forming their children through their own active practice of the faith. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's give a round of applause and of support of these children and their families. This is a beautiful sight to be able to look out and see all of you, all our parishioners here at Mass today. It's always good to hear your verbal and sung responses. And I know that there's some over here that were very, very responsive to all the prayers. And that's a sign that the children want to be here. They want to be here. And so I encourage our parents and all parents to bring their children for the celebration of Mass. Please be seated. I'm sure that as you came into church today, you saw the yellow cards. We're in the process of trying to update our database with regard to email addresses and telephone numbers, uh, whatever number that you would want us to use. We found out that during the COVID, as we tried to get in touch with our parishioners, especially when we were doing wellness calls, we did not have updated information. And so we thought this weekend at all the masses, we give our parishioners the opportunity to provide us with updated information. So even if you think that we have your data, please complete a card and that will be an affirmation of what we have. If husband and wives are here, um, please complete two cards, one for each of you. And um, again, you probably have different email addresses and perhaps different cell numbers, uh, home numbers, whatever. So whatever you want us to use to contact you, please complete the cards. Now, in a few moments, the ushers will come forward.
please stand. This is the weekend that the Archdiocese chose to begin their initiative, uh, Nothing Compares to Being There, which is a way of reminding all of us that coming to Mass in person is the best way to uh, honor and praise and thank our God and to be nourished by the Eucharist. Of course, we've been encouraging our parishioners to return in person for the celebration of Mass, and today is a, certainly a, a, almost a full church here, but over the last uh, several weeks, uh, we've been averaging uh, over 600, 619 last weekend. Before COVID, we were about 700 at this time of the year. So slowly but surely we're coming back and I would just encourage all of you certainly to be here, but also to encourage your family, uh, friends, neighbors uh, to return to uh, the celebration of mass in person. Thank you. And finally, not to embarrass her, but uh, Stephanie, take a good look at her. She's not moving, but not moving far. Uh, she's not moving, but uh, she and her husband Joe are expecting uh, their first baby uh, next month, and this will be uh, Stephanie's last time for a while uh, here leading a song. So, Stephanie, we thank you and we congratulate you and Joe. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 393, Go in Peace to Love and Serve the Lord, number 393.